I'm Michael Barber. I'm the Director of Communications for the School District of Manatee County. I'm just going to introduce uh, uh, the people who will be participating in the uh, uh, press conference this afternoon. Uh, first of all, we have uh, our Superintendent, uh, Cynthia Saunders. We have uh, Sheriff Rick Wells. We have two school board members. We have uh, uh, Gina Messenger and Richard Tatum. Uh, we have Parish Community High Principal Craig Little. Uh, we have uh, Deputy Superintendent of Operations Doug Wagner, Executive Director of Secondary Schools Willie Clark, uh, Chief of uh, Security and Safety for the District uh, Paul D'Amico. We have uh, the uh, Director of Public uh, Safety for Manatee County, uh, Jody Fisk. So we're going to start uh, uh, this afternoon with Superintendent Cynthia Saunders. So. Thank you all for being here and giving us the opportunity to discuss the occurrences of today. As you know, Parish Community High School has had a number of anonymous, not credible threats over the, over the past few days. And the school administration, as well as the partnership with the local sheriff's department, have taken those threats very seriously, adhered to those, and followed all district and state protocols. It is unfortunate that these threats continue and have disrupted the education for so many. I know that the Sheriff's Department and Sheriff Wells is working diligently to bring this to a halt. But as you know, that even though these threats are anonymous and have not been credible, we must take action and we must take each threat credibly until it is resolved. I will tell you that the principal, Mr. Little, and his staff have done a tremendous job. I'm sure you can imagine the disruption that this has impacted our students, our teachers, and this community. We are asking for your help and the parents' help to speak to your children and to ensure that their children are not participating or involved in making these threats. At this time, I would like to turn it over to Sheriff Wells so he can discuss what his agency is doing and information forthcoming. Sheriff Wells. Thanks, Superintendent. Good afternoon, everyone. Just wanted to really get to the point. So since February 1st, uh, we've had four bomb threats here at Parrish Community High School. We are working very hard uh, to locate the source of these threats. I can tell you, I, 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 I feel for the, the, the parents and the children and the, and the staff to have to go through uh, this type of trauma each and every day. We take this very seriously. Uh, one thing that has made it a little difficult for us is that these threats have come through the Fortify Florida uh, app. Uh, we, as you know, that's, a, that's all about an anonymity. Uh, you can remain anonymous. You can send these, uh, uh, this information through this app. The, the problem that we're having is that when they use the app, the host site, may not be in the state of Florida. It pushes the information through one host site that's in California. We've, we've located an IP address out of California. We've got subpoenas out there now trying to, to, to gather that information. We believe at one point they used a, a different VPN that uh, you can get online and that IP address was pushed through a host site in Romania. So you can see the difficulties that we're having. We're having to work very hard to try to to get this information that we need to, to solve these cases, uh, we're not going to stop. We're currently working with the FBI to help us out in Romania and also in California. Uh, when we find who is responsible, we will arrest them. We will take them to jail. I also want to, to let you know that Crime Stoppers and Manatee County uh, Campus Crime Stoppers is offering a $500 reward to anyone that can give us information that would lead to the arrest of these criminals, and that's what they are. And we will continue to work uh, tirelessly until we find out who's responsible. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to have uh, Paris Community High Principal Craig Little. So.
Hello, welcome everybody. Good afternoon. As Mr. Barber said, my name is Craig Little. I'm the school principal here at Parish Community High School. Just want to go through something that's prepared and uh, give all the information that we can give. Uh, first, this morning via our anonymous tip line called Fortify Florida, we received two threats against the school related to a bomb that would go off at approximately 10:15 a.m. Multiple times over the past few school days, there have been vague threats, different in nature, that we have followed school and district protocol and acted upon. We have worked hand in hand with law enforcement and district officials to vet out each threat accordingly. We take each threat very seriously. As the safety and security of our students is our utmost and main priority. We're working with law enforcement in our district to have our answers uh, answered as quickly as possible. In regards to today's evacuation, students were evacuated to the football field while law enforcement did a thorough check of, a thorough check of our entire campus. During that time, parents were not allowed on campus and only student drivers were permitted off campus with parent permission. It took approximately 3.5 hours for law enforcement to clear our campus. Upon clearance, from law enforcement, upon clearance from law enforcement, students were released back to class until dismissal at the end of the school day. As school principal, I'm concerned with the amount of time this is taken away from our students' education. Please know that I am committed to getting to the bottom of this and finding out who the source is. Parents, we need help with talking to your children. If they know anything related to these incidents over the past few days, we're asking that they please reach out to school administration. Thank you, and I'll pass it back to Mr. Barber. Thank you. We'll, we will take a few questions. So, uh, uh, Can you explain what made this threat rise to the level that we saw today compared to other threats the school has seen? What made this one different? Paul, you want? This is Willie Clark, Executive Director of Secondary Schools. Paul D'Amico, Chief of Security for the school district. Uh, what made this one so serious is that it was a specific time that was given of day. And uh, as I said, it was a bomb threat. So a bomb threat with a specific time triggered us going into a, evacuating the campus. And to only to add to that is the fact that when we have something like that, we take it serious. And what we have to do is our protocol is to evacuate and when we have a specific time. Think about that. Everybody would be out of the building for sure. So we, we felt that would be the best course of action. It's our, and it's our typical security protocol for that. Um, can, you talk what kind of can, can you talk a little bit about the confusion today? We heard some parents were sent to the fairgrounds to pick up their kids after hearing that buses were going to be transporting. But then parents were frantically here. And they were expressing their frustrations because it seemed a little bit unfair. I can speak a little bit of, on that. What happens is when we have a situation like this, the school's being checked for bombs with dogs, right? So we have to keep a distance of at least 300 feet based on the type of bombs that are typical. So b based on that, we don't want to do any reunification here. We like to use off-site. It's more organized. It's controlled. We have the county working with us. We have full-on Salvation Army showing up. We had everything, food, canteen, trucks for f water everything so it's just it's more organized and done well we have district admin there with computers we do a thorough process so in other words all the kids can be on one side undercover and not sitting in the middle of the football field in sun and we, happened, well we had it set up initially to do the reunification off campus because of that we thought that the search of the campus was going to take longer than it actually did so once they were able to check the campus a little quicker and there was enough time to make that decision to change, we changed it because it would be easier for the families to meet their kids here. For those parents who don't have transportation to the site, they can pick their kids up here at campus or we can release them on buses or what have you. So initially we, we were gonna go off campus, but once the, the search was able to go through quicker and the campus was cleared, we decided to change it back to on campus. You all have talked about um, just expressing your frustrations, how this is disrupting education in the classroom. Now, parents and students, when they were getting picked up, they were like, we're scared to come back to school. Well, number one, what would you say to them? And number two, um, some of them have also said, maybe we want to see online learning, so we don't have to be afraid to go to school. What would you say to that? You would have missed on it. We certainly understand that. 
Uh, every threat that's been made uh, has been anonymous and it has not been credible. Uh, so unfortunately in the day and age we're in, threats can be made in an autonomous, in, in an, an anonymous way. Uh, fortunately, we do have law enforcement working with us. I would tell them that the campus is safe. It has been cleared. Uh, not only have our Sheriff's Department brought out their drug dogs and their bomb dogs here, but uh, our neighboring counties have come to assist. Hillsborough County helped us with that. So uh, the campus is safe. Uh, learning is available, but we do have to take the threats when they come in and adhere to the policy and the protocol. So what I would say is parents certainly have many options. Um, online er, le learning like uh, that occurred during COVID does not exist. The state does not allow for that, but there's certainly other options if they're interested in that. They can contact the school counselor. They will work with them. But uh, I do know that the campus is safe for learning tomorrow. We uh, have law enforcement that's already inspected every inch of the campus and uh, they are on, on top of this case and are working very hard to catch the people that are deliberately disrupting the learning for over 2,000 students. I just have a, a question. This may be more for the sheriff. Sure. Given the, it's about the investigation. Just to kind of clear up what you explained there, is it that somebody may be calling in the threat from this area, then it goes through California, and maybe through Romania, or is it that it's no, we we uh, we believe through the app that the that the threat was submitted here through the app. It goes to a hosting site um, in in California, and to to my knowledge, there are, there are a couple of different hosting sites that this app uses. So we know that this particular threat today went went to California. That'll make it a little easier for us to hopefully identify uh, the suspect. But you can. There are ways, and, and, and criminals know this, and I don't, but you get a basically a fake VPN, right? That's going to mask who you are as you're sending information out over the web. So that is usually a, uh, a hosting site from a different country, in this case, Romania. What kind of charges can somebody... It would be a second-degree felony for uh, written threats to, to harm others and also uh, a misdemeanor charge of uh, disrupting a school function. And how did it I mean, it's stressful for, for everyone involved, uh, law enforcement kids, uh, you know, staff and, and school board, everyone. So we brought in all the resources that we had. Uh, luckily, Hillsborough County SO was able to bring over some of their bomb dogs to help us sweep the building, which really, you know, expedited that so we could get the kids back uh, into class, the ones that had stayed. Uh, so there's a lot of resources, but we'll, we'll use all the resources needed until we come to a happy conclusion, and that will be when we make an arrest on this case, or several. And is the app, are they helping you, or you had to file? Um... Well, the hosting sites, uh, as I explained, are, are not here in Florida, the hosting site that we are working with now, so it's out of California. They do require a subpoena for the information, and we will have that to them very soon. From a law, law enforcement perspective, our main goal is to, to make sure that the building is safe, and, and we did that. Um, was there, uh, I think the superintendent would like to add. Yes, I'm sure it did seem chaotic, and unfortunately, when you have a different situation daily, you have to respond differently daily. Uh, we cannot release students when they're at school unless we're following the protocol that ensures that the parent is receiving them or the parent is giving permission for their child to be released from campus. So uh, when you have a number of them on the football field and you have to have a portable computer site set up so that we can get access of information, it does take a little bit longer. Remember, if you have a bomb consideration, 
parents cannot drive right up at the front of the school either. So because of all those situations, we did have to change the protocols of how they could access their children and receive their children, but the rules are still in place for how you have to check them out regardless of the situation. Because at the time we thought it was going to take approximately six hours to clear the building, we were moving them to an off-site location to where it would be more conducive. Once we knew that they could speed up the clearance of the campus, uh, it was deemed that it would be quicker and easier for them to check their kids out here. And by that time, uh, the bus, uh, you know, exit of the school day was almost in, in check then. So un unfortunately, uh, these things develop as, as they're developing and when we get all the information in. Until we know how long it's gonna to take to secure the campus, we really can't tell the parents how we're going to operate and release the kids. I would just like to add one thing as director of communications for the school district. I help the principals write uh, messages to their parents uh, when uh, there's a threat at a school. And since 2019, I've, uh, I've helped write uh, over 98 threat messages so we and that's just the ones I've been involved in so we've had at least 98 threats now what I can tell you that's great about Manatee County is every single one of those threats has been taken seriously by law enforcement not just the sheriff's office but Brainton Police Department Holmes Beach Police Department uh, Palmetto Police Department they go through a very thorough job every single one they investigate until it's cleared and in many cases they've made arrests and they uh, people have been charged and and they so they're very serious uh, we want our parents to know that i'll tell you the thing that's different about this one is we've had successive days it's been uh, virtually every single day since last wednesday that we're getting different threats about this school so uh, it is a terribly traumatic, traumatic experience for everyone involved, parents, students, and the people who work at this school. So I just wanted to mention that. I just want to say one more thing to, to the parents of our community. I need for you to seriously sit down and talk to your children about making idle threats, any threats whatsoever. When we find those that are responsible, we are going to put them in jail they are going to be charged with a felony and that felony is going to stay with them for the rest of their life. I'm just asking that anyone that has any information about these threats, please contact the sheriff's office, the school board or Crime Stoppers, but we need to put it into this and we need to put it into it today. That will be absolutely. If they, if they submit, if we find out that the same person submitted four threats, that's going to be four felonies. We will charge them for each and every threat. Are these all just bomb threats? I've heard parents, I guess, kind of confused, saying they've heard you know, other threats other than just bomb threats. The, 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 the threats uh, over the last uh, few days have been bomb threats all, on Fortify. Yes, sir. We'll continue to have a stronger presence here to, to hopefully make the, uh, the the kids and the parents feel better. But uh, we've been doing that since last Wednesday, so we will continue with that. One of the questions I've been receiving from parents is what the communication dynamic looks like, looks like between the sheriff's office and the district. Um, you guys have talked about the parents being sent down to the fairgrounds, um, and during that time, all of a sudden they're turned back around and come here. Um, was it known ahead of time before they made the call to you know pick up their kids offsite that well, we are communicating with them, I, and I can't really um, talk about the discussions that the school board was having about, you know, a, a pickup location. We were we were busy trying to clear this school, uh, and we were keeping them up to date on, on the status. But once again, uh, they thought this was going to be a six-hour process, and if it wasn't for the help of Hillsborough County SO, it would have been. Thank you all.